Record of Ragnarok was meant to be one of the coldest anime we've ever seen. Look at the manga real quick. It's about a bunch of gods who get together and are like, okay, humans have been messing up the earth, eh, let's kill them. But then a Valkyrie lady is like, no, that's not very anime-like. Let's do a tournament arc. You set up your 13 best gods, we set up our 13 best humans, and if the humans win, we let them stay for another thousand years. Then Zeus is like, us? Fight humans? Oh, 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 what a foolish idea. I am Zeus. I, I fuck with dragons. I slay titans. Are you chicken? Fuck dragons! Every single chapter after that is among the most hype, well-drawn action you can find in a manga. Bow, wop, boom! They got Nikolai Tesla, Jesus, Adam, Poseidon, Jack the Ripper. So as I said, this wasn't meant to be that rubber ducky, fart in the bathtub, discord nitro, safe space, nut tickling, hopscotch, pansy garbage. This anime was meant to be cold. So when it came out, we got this. Yeah, what no, at least they were fighting. What the what fuck the, is this what effect? The what, what the whoa, fuck whoa, is going whoa, whoa. on? Yo, 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 what happened? Enter Booger Nuts Productions, the studio who made the anime. With the exception of a few, Booger Nuts Productions isn't known for making good shows. In fact, they're guilty of making Wonder Momo, which is considered one of the most awful anime of all time. What do you have to say for yourself, Booger Nuts? It wasn't my fault, I swear! It was Netflix! Netflix. You licensed the anime, correct? Mm-hmm. Then you're the one who slapped a big fat logo on the show. So, well, uh, yeah. What about it? And? You paid a bunch of anime YouTubers to pretend they didn't catch AIDS from watching it. Am I wrong? AIDS? Come on. Stranger Things? You don't like Stranger Things? You got nothing on me. Nothing. Capiche? Then what's this? What? I don't know who to blame for the terrible anime we got, but I'm on a lot of AIDS medication just so we can watch this anime and laugh at how tremendously hard Netflix fumbled their bag. Let's start digging. Record of Ragnarok was one of the most popular manga in Japan, all without having a story. You're here to watch two muscled men stand butt to butt and fight each other. Everyone understands this. So the art must transport you to the ghost of an indifferent Victorian London, or floor your ass when Zeus winds up to throw a giant undodgeable hammer that gets dodged? That was weird. But then it spins right back into Thor's hand to build up centrifugal force, which he uses to spin his ass around and smack into his opponent. The magic is, you don't need context. You know that was cool. Instead of bulletproof writing, the books capture you by putting on a spectacle, which gets murky when you interpret a scene like this. What? Is it a bait? Is it a bait? What? what the fuck is he doing? No! What's going on? Oh. <laughs> Lubu was not supposed to do that. If the show doesn't have a great story, nor an awesome main character, and instead lures people in with its fights, that gives you a pretty good list of things to not fuck up. Oh no, they This show made me realize that if you don't like a fight, it's probably one of two things. Bad pacing and bad animation. Record of Ragnarok has mastered fucking up both. When things are moving, they don't look good. When things aren't moving, we call that Record of Ragnarok. They shake JPEGs so you know that impacts are powerful instead of drawing powerful impacts. Uh, instead of saying scenes, my friends started saying slides, which I'd even notice for a couple hours, the ultimate fight of the series, the one that every manga reader fawned over. Men peed, men creamed at the sight of this one. It's low-key supposed to be the climax of season one. This is what you have to look forward to. Wow, wow, things are really heating up. Oh man, something's happening. Wow! Oh, the girl, the fucking girl, no one cares about is going crazy. Oh, oh, he did not just do that. Boobies! Oh my god, whoa, he got bigger and, uh, yep. Deep down, the fights are interesting. Zeus fights Adam from the Bible. That is either the most smart or the most retarded idea I've ever heard. The plot is so unpredictable. The moves are so imagined. You might just find yourself breaking character. What the fuck? Ooh. Oh, that's cool. Split the sky. That is kind of cool. <laughs> that, that is, is kind of cool. It's just that if you start thinking these bi curious thoughts, there's a flashback waiting to spit in your face. Hold on, hold on, seven minutes, everybody. Make sure that they don't show the fight. 
What are you starting impact? Oh, I'm not a wall. The pacing. Every noteworthy event is an invitation for a 10 minute long tangent. The characters make eye contact flashback. A character gets the first hit in flashback. Thor finally throws his fucking hammer after 19 minutes and 10 seconds flashback. If you want to maintain any interest in your fights, show them. There are backstories in the book. The thing is, it takes me never minutes and zero seconds to finish reading it. Thor's backstory? That took me two minutes and 40 seconds to read slowly. The anime, six minutes. It doesn't sound like a long time, but with animation like this, it feels like you're in the sunken place. You're on duty right now, Captain. Yeah, so their mouths don't move. Oh yeah, they don't move either, I forgot that. Oh, there's a classic right there. The giant baby made out of He throws it back for a second if you didn't notice. Um, I feel as if my eyes have been violated, and this became truly problematic when I realized the story isn't very If you think good art is just an accessory in anime, you are wrong. It also serves to dazzle, to steal your attention from the extremely stupid shit going on in the background. While reading, I never thought, why is there a stupid kid? Who gives a shit about this character? Who writes a story and thinks, oh, th th this needs a child who doesn't know shit and cries every episode? Fucking no one! The One Piece! The One Piece is real! These thoughts never crossed my mind while reading, but with the excruciating pacing and the battles that seem to be animated by six rats in a trench coat pretending to be a grown-up, your focus shifts. You start getting irritable. You notice things you normally wouldn't get annoyed at. Episode 7 is centered around Adam and Zeus, but Adam has done something very cool, so that's the show's cue to spend 4 billion hours on Adam's backstory. Eve is in the Garden of Eden, being me tooed by this snake monster. But Eve is like, mm -mm, I am not expressing enthusiastic consent, and you should respect my boundaries. And the snake guy is like, You simpering whore! This is the most realistic writing so far. The serpent had tried to take the woman for himself, but Eve remained true to her beloved Adam. First off, how stupid do you think I am? I couldn't have deduced that on my own. He frames Eve by taking a bite of the forbidden fruit and challenging her in court. I have the very apple she bit into! Your honor? That was bitten by Monster Mouth. The accusations were false. However, the likelihood of a guilty verdict 99.99999% How did you reach this number? You know what? I trust this visibly evil snake man. It's not that the show is actively stupid. I mean, Guan Yu is a Gundam for some reason, and they keep calling Ragnarok the final confrontation between man and the gods when it can occur every thousand years, so it's like not final at all. But the story isn't bad just leaves a ton to be desired. The manga is quick to every step. Fight, move on. Fight, move on. And so the permanent cast members don't get a ton of character development. There isn't some super thought out plot in the background and the manga knows that. But when you're adapting that into an anime and you're spending a majority of every episode on fucking audience commentary, drawn out explanations of things we watched happen, and flashbacks, not fun. They work in a written medium where I control the tempo, but an anime is a whole different animal. It moves way slower. You gotta cut some things out, change stuff that doesn't necessarily work. Lubu yawns for 20 seconds. This should not have been allowed. The abysmal art and so so story have made Record of Ragnarok one of the most fun shows I've seen in forever. No matter what is happening, something funny is on screen. And it's only a matter of time before one of your homies says something gay about it. <laughs> to come. <laughs> <laughs> the concept really is cool. A little, a lot of bad animation and annoying pauses can't change that. If you let the show ride and you don't focus too much on what's happening, I promise it's entertaining. Until you leave that Discord call and it's just you and this shitty ass anime. We could leave it at that, but I think I have to talk about the mess. When an anime looks like this, I see endless excuses. Usually the classic, why don't you draw an anime instead? And that's a weird thing to say, because it's so fucking stupid. For Record of Ragnarok in particular, I kept seeing this claim that the studio only had two months to animate the entire show. Uh oh, I didn't know that. What's your Word source? Word of mouth. I've seen like nine guys saying stuff like this, and somehow zero guys saying 
Hmm. That's fucking stupid. I, w I wonder why they do things like that. Assume this is true. They were under an extremely tight production schedule. Let's normalize keeping shit in the oven if it ain't baked right. I know that animators are under an immense amount of stress. Deadlines, slave wages, verbal abuse. It's enough to drive most people insane. But I don't want to talk to those guys right now. I want to talk to their manager. If you pay your slaves more, you might be able to make hella money. I've seen what happens when you give hungry artists a chance to go wild. When ambition meets opportunity, when risks are commonplace, you get art that weathers decades. This is not it. As someone who's editing this video right now, I see the reused frames and the assets being rotated and the horse. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. God. And I think to myself, that's me trying to hit a deadline. When there's so many industry veterans working on the show, it only magnifies that suspicion. Booger nuts. No one is forcing you to make this anime. If you don't have the resources, if you can't give animators the time they need to make something special, maybe. Well, someone has to animate this shit. You must the source material is dynamite. It should have gotten the One Punch Man treatment. If that's unrealistic, at the very least, do you know what this anime should look like? Tom and fucking Jerry. I can pick a scene at random, put that side by side with Record of Ragnarok and guarantee it mogs the hell out of it. The way that cat is just getting down and dirty on that bass, he's making that thing breathe. It's starting to speak. The backgrounds are somehow so lived in. You don't question the setting. This is just where cats live. Jerry sleeps in a sardine can and has little matchbox drawers. 1946. This anime was made in 1946 and this was made 75 years later in 2021. One is an adaptation of one of the highest selling manga in Japan. The other is a gag cartoon. Is it an unfair comparison? So? But is it wrong for me to believe that with all of the advancements in modern animation, all of the time saved, not re-inking, hand painting, and scanning every frame, we should expect anime to be animated? I don't think so, yes. The anime is extremely fun to watch stoned and even funner when you're with five neurodivergent adults. Uh oh, uh oh. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a shame that's the only way I can enjoy the show. Subscribe. I do stuff like this all the time. And leave a comment. I respond to those. If I was a woman, that would've got me wet, I ain't gonna cut. How could you do such a thing? How could you force love to partner with- Don't clip that.